Hey everybody, welcome to the Two Guys at a Cool channel. My name is Eric. Today we're going to be making a viewer requested video beef mortadella with pistachios and telecherry peppercorn. Absolutely incredible. And I got to tell you, before we start, it's not a complicated recipe, but it does require some special equipment because mortadella is an emulsified sausage and we want to try to create the perfect texture for this high level charcuterie. So with all that out of the way, let's make an all beef mortadella. We're gonna be using brisket for this particular project. And the reason I like brisket so much is because not only does it have a great beefy flavor, it's got a lot of beautiful fat and it's loaded with connective tissue, which is made up of collagen. And that's gonna keep our sausage juicy, moist and act as a binder. I'm gonna separate all of my fat from this brisket from the meat. And the reason I wanna do that is because I want about an 80% lean beef to about a 20% fat ratio in this recipe. And separating the fat's the easiest way to do that. So we're just gonna add the fat back in until we get to the right amount. And there we go. There is our beef and fat for this all beef mortadella. Once the meat has been chilled, we're gonna grind that on a 10 millimeter plate. We just wanna get a good coarse grind going. And then once we're done with the coarse grind, we're going to re-chill it until it's just about frozen and then re-grind it on a three millimeter plate. And if it's chilled properly, you could see that the strains of meat and fat are all independent. It looks like loose spaghetti and that's perfect. And now that our meat has been ground twice, it's time to add our salt. Adding salt at this stage is going to help extract a particular protein from the meat called myosin. Myosin is gonna act as the binder between the fat and the water during the emulsification process. So all we're doing here is we're sprinkling our salt on top of our ground meat, and we're just gonna mix it well to combine. We're not really mixing it like you would a sausage. So just toss that meat around really nice. And once you feel like you have the salt relatively well incorporated, we're just gonna take that, place it into a bowl, cover it with cling film, and then refrigerate it overnight. Through the night, the salt is gonna be reacting with the meat, pulling out that particular protein, myosin, which is gonna create a glue-like matrix. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and uncover it. Let me show you what this glue-like matrix is gonna look like. Our meat should be, at this point, more bound together. And as you can see, as I'm pulling it apart, it's not loose like ground beef should be. It's actually more bound together, and that's a direct result of the myosin being extracted by adding the salt. And that's a great thing. This is actually gonna help us out tremendously during the next stage of chopping our meat. We do wanna make sure that our meat at this stage is in the low 30s, 32 to 34 degrees Fahrenheit is perfect. And here are some of the ingredients we're gonna be using. We've got some pistachios, telecherry peppercorns. We've also got our seasoning blend and you know, it's smoked paprika, it's a little coriander, some mace. The uh, recipe will be in the description box below. We've got a little potato starch, which is gonna be acting as our binder in this recipe. And finally, we're gonna be using some ice. If you're gonna be using regular ice from your freezer, you wanna make sure you crush it up a little bit, otherwise it's too hard on your equipment. This particular ice is nugget ice and it tends to break up a lot easier. The piece of equipment that is necessary is a food processor and you wanna make sure that the motor is strong enough to handle emulsified sausages. Otherwise you're gonna burn the motor out and I wouldn't want you to do that. We're now gonna add our mincemeat and about half of the amount of ice. This is gonna keep our temperature cold during the chopping process. The friction of those blades increase the temperature dramatically. And the thing that we don't want is for the temperature of our meat during this stage, to exceed 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, at this stage, we're continuing to extract myosin, and myosin is extracted most effectively from meat under 48 degrees Fahrenheit. So keep an instant read thermometer on hand. I'm using one from Thermalworks, and I'm keeping my meat incredibly cold. During this first stage, you could do a couple different things. You can chop your meat until your meat and fat is homogenous, which means you can't differentiate between one or the other or you can chop it to where it's mostly homogenous, but you have white specks, which is what I'm gonna do here, because I think it's gonna give our all beef mortadella a cool appearance. Now, as you can see, this is what our farce looks like, and we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of our ice. So this is the other half of our ice. And at this point, we're also gonna add in our seasonings. Now, I've been chopping this for roughly about two or three minutes. The blades on this fruit processor are incredibly sharp, and that's another key uh, element in producing the right texture. If your blades aren't sharp, it's just gonna whip too much air into your farce. We're only gonna be mixing this enough to well incorporate the seasonings. As soon as those are well incorporated, 
we're gonna now add our binder. Now the binder is the very last thing that you add. And notice the temperature of our farce when we add our binder. It's gonna be above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This particular stage, we're gonna keep our temperature under 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is where the emulsification is actually gonna happen, where the fat and the water bind together, creating a beautiful emulsion and a great texture for our mortadella. If your temperature gets too high over 55 degrees Fahrenheit, your emulsion could break. So you definitely wanna make sure that you keep the temperature at this stage under 55 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna to continue to chop our farce uh, for another minute or so, check the temperature, and it looks like it's relatively well incorporated. My temperature here is 50 degrees, 51 degrees absolutely perfect. It's very, very sticky. It feels like it has the right consistency. We're now going to go ahead and move on to the next step. If you're going to be adding any ingredients that are additional, like in this case, peppercorns or pistachios, or if you're going to be adding cubed fat or olives, this is the stage you do that in. Just go ahead and mix that into your meat, and we're just about ready. Before we put it into our 150 millimeter casing, we need to taste it. If you need to adjust the seasonings, this is the time to do it. You'll also be able to get a sneak peek at the texture of your mortadella. And while you're cooking your sample piece, if you have loads of fat that has rendered out, you'll also know that your emulsion has broken and there's unfortunately nothing you can do about that. Your cut should be smooth with a springy texture. It should be incredibly juicy at this particular stage and the seasoning should be well balanced. In my case, we're good to go. So let's stuff it into a casing. As soon as your mortadella is finished cooking, and the internal temperature at this point should be around 140 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and take it out of that water bath and place it into an ice bath to stop the cooking process. Mortadella benefits from a night in the fridge, so we're gonna take it from this ice bath to the refrigerator, which is gonna help set it, develop its flavors, and get it ready to slice. Are you ready to see what this mortadella looks like? I am. Now it's time for the moment of truth. How does it taste? Two days of preparation, it's now ready. I cut a couple different slices, so this is a really thin slice. And although some of the pistachios are coming out, it's actually holding together relatively well, surprisingly well. That's delicious. It's got a great texture. You know that classic mortadella texture. The pistachios and the telecherry peppers add just a whole other dimension to this charcuterie. It's got a great beefy flavor and the spices are perfect. They all complement the beef. 
If you have any questions on how to make this all beef mortadella, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you got anything out of this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it on your social media. If you're new to this channel, we'd like to say welcome and we invite you to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can get notified of all future uploads. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week.